will tell you that starting a business in Stockholm is quite easy and even I myself have said that at some point but unless you have someone to show you how mm, it might take a little while to get the hang of it so in this video I'm going to show you exactly how I started my own business here in Sweden and also how you potentially can do the same I'm assuming that if you're watching this video and you're typing on your computer how to start a business in Sweden, you already gave the whole entrepreneurship thing um, somewhat of a consideration. So you have done the foundational work of looking at your market, doing some market research, looking at products, uh, services that you might want to start. So what is your business idea? You kind of already thought about financing. Do you need a co-founder? Do you need a team? So these are all considerations that I'm not going to go over in this particular video. However, if my assumptions are wrong, please comment below if you'd like me to make a video about how I decided to become an entrepreneur and why maybe this is also the career for you. If you're feeling insecure or not quite ready to become an entrepreneur but you're watching this video, it might be worth asking yourself, what is it that I'm missing? Am I lacking a business plan? Do I just not have a good business idea? Do I miss the expertise or the team? Whichever it is that you're insecure about, it's important to know that well, all of us have been there at some point. If we started our own business, we probably had the same insecurities. If you'd like me to do a video about this, please comment below. Uh, what is it that's holding you back? But if you are ready now to start your own business and you just don't know how, this is exactly the video for you. The first step in, you know, a successful entrepreneurship path is after all to actually act. <laughs> the first thing you need to know is that there are many different types of businesses. There's sole traders, where you work for yourself, essentially being self-employed. There's limited liability companies, or so-called aktibolag here in Sweden. There's also banking companies, investment companies. There's all kinds of different types of companies. So depending on the category of the business endeavor that you're starting, your company will be structured differently from the others. Registering as a sole trader, for example, where you work for yourself, like almost like a freelancer or a consultant, well, that is actually quite easy to do here in Sweden. It only takes about 30 minutes of an online digital application and you're done. That's it. You're a sole trader. If you want a video about it, I can definitely do a video of talking about how to set up your own sole tradership. But here in this video, I want to talk to you a little bit about starting your own limited liability company, which is the company that I started here. So in case you don't know what a limited liability company is, essentially it's a company with a board, shareholders, and of course maybe you're gonna hire people so they're gonna become your employees. To start a limited liability company here in Sweden, or so-called Aktibolag, you need 25,000 sex, Swedish crowns, in upfront capital. Now this means that you either have to find this money yourself or save it yourself, like I did, for example, we were self-funded, or you need to find investors. And investors can come in all forms, shapes and sizes. Uh, they can be your family, they can be your friends, they can be your teachers. I know someone whose investor, whose first investor was their hairdresser. Like what? So as soon as you have this business idea and the business plan, you should start looking around for people who may want to pitch in and invest in your company. Now this means that they will come and take a piece, a share, a stake in your company. So just like a cake, your company is divided into shares and when you register that company then whoever contributed with money up front they will be part of the shareholders if that was the agreement you arrived upon just to be clear the 25,000 sec they are not a fee they are just a way for you to actually register your business and have some starting capital to work with the fee that comes from the application to register your business that is close to 2,000 sec and that will have to be paid separately from the 25,000. The reason for this is because you actually need to find a bank to first open up an account to allow you to deposit the 25,000 in there and verify to the tax agency and the business agency that you indeed do have the deposit money uh, that needs to be there uh, in order for you to start your own Aktibolag. Also, you may be thinking, why do I need 25,000 sec? Why, why did they put this cap? It's so they would deter people, discourage people from actually starting a business. So they try to just kind of like weed out anybody that would not be fully committed. If there's no money in the mix, people often will just like not care as much. So as long as there's this uh, sort of starting capital point threshold, it actually allows 
allows people to be more seriously committed because then you need to make it work because you just spent that money there. It actually used to be much higher. So in recent years, in order to encourage entrepreneurship, Swedish law kind of changed to allow, to accommodate for more people to become entrepreneurs, to start their own endeavor, and they changed the, the, the threshold. So now it's 25,000 sec, which is approximately $2,000. So it doesn't sound like a lot, right? But it is enough that the people who really cannot afford to start their own business, they they cannot register that business. These 25,000 sec can come from many different people or many different sources, but ideally you would start with a small number of founders, maybe one to five max, and then from there you can kind of leverage as you grow, you can leverage the valuation of your company to then bring in other investors that might have to add capital uh, to fuel your business and fuel the growth, the scaling of your business. But just be, bearing in mind, this money will be inaccessible to you for at least two months uh, until the business application has been processed, until you've booked your appointments with the bank to actually put in your business number there and then have everything set up so you actually get access to that money. Once you've secured the 25,000 sec, however way you did it, you need to contact a bank. Now, why am I telling you already to contact the bank when you haven't even started this application for the business? <laughs> Well, the reason for this is because Sweden likes to make everything hard, you know, bureaucracy, paperwork, this is how this works. So instead, they ask you to deposit the amount in a bank account, a bank account that is a temporary bank account made by a bank that would have approved your business plan or some type of, you know, application. And usually you can do all of this online, by the way. So everything, at least in Sweden, is very digital and very straightforward in that sense. But if you don't know what you're doing and this is your first time registering, it can take quite a while to fill out that application. So just go on any of the banks, SCB, Handelsbanken, Swedbank. Most of these banks will have some type of application for business owners, becoming a business corporate customer. Of course, you don't always necessarily need cash. Sometimes you can use your equity. So if you have other types of assets like your house or other like valuable assets uh, under your possession, those can also be used to vouch for the capital. So that's also worth looking into if you're wondering how to do that please check out Virksamt. Uh, it's the main one-stop shop for everything related to starting a business in Sweden. All right, so now you have your money in the bank account. <laughs> now you can fill out the rest of the application in the Verksamt uh, website. Everything is digital. You sign in with your mobile bank ID, which is something you should have if you have a personal number and a bank account in Sweden. If you don't understand Swedish, that's okay. Just use English and translations and it works fine on the digital application. And then you fill out the application just exactly with the same information you have filled in for the bank um, form because otherwise they don't trust it. <laughs> So if you're smart, you just copy and paste the answers. Uh, that's kind of what I did my second time around. Just to give you an impression, the first time I fill out the Verksamt application, it took me about a month to actually finish it. Uh, but the second time it was like less than, I don't know, three hours. <laughs> so it was way faster because I already knew what the process was supposed to be. So what you're gonna do here is go through all these fields. They ask you for contact information. They ask you like, have you checked the name of your business? Is it already existing? That will cause conflict. So make sure that you have an original brand name. And they will also ask you information about your articles of association, which in case you don't know, this is essentially just the layout of everything that's going to happen in the board of your business. So how people make decisions, majority voting, um, how, uh, you know, how the legalities of things work. Usually I just defer to the normal laws and everything is according to the normal laws in Sweden for uh, Aktibolag uh, setups. But nonetheless, if you want to put in a spicy little uh, rule that, you know, majority means 75% saying, yes, we agree with this rather than 51%, then that's it. Then you put that rule. I generally tended to keep it very simple and whoever I brought in as founders or co-founders or let's say co-investors then I would also put their names and their personal numbers there so everything is already registered up front they will also ask you to make predictions like forecasting what is your business going to make the first year who are you going to talk to are you going to need to put cash in like who knows right these are all like totally random predictions try to be realistic how much is your product going to be sold for putting that information there exactly like you put in the bank form that's it. That's not too complicated. If the numbers do change, either for bigger or lower, 
Well, bigger is a little bit more complicated, but nonetheless, it's fine. When you fill out your taxes, it will all be in order, so you don't have to worry about this sort of projection being accurate, okay? And by the end of it, they ask you to put in the email address for the bank teller. Like, whoever you've been in contact with, they will provide you, once you've finalized that whole bank application, uh, a bank form, then you actually will provide uh, a little email address that in this brick sum to the work agency form, it will then send an email, a confirmation to the bank that you have submitted your application for registering your business. And then once the bank receives it, then they will reply back, oh yeah, indeed, like Fran actually did get, you know, the 25,000 in here. So that is one way to go about it. And pretty straightforward. Don't be like the kind of person like me who I had no clue about how the whole bank thing worked. And I ended up doing the whole Verksamt application first. And then I, I had to wait another three weeks for the bank application to be processed. So that was crazy. So instead, do the bank one first, copy all the information to the Verksamt one. And then by the time you get to the end, you can actually click submit and they will be responding much faster because they have already done all the work up front. All you have left to do is click submit. And upon clicking submit you have to pay your application fee the application fee i think last time i checked is a thousand nine hundred sec so yeah that's already expensive and no that is not coming from the twenty five thousand sec that is still independent and it has to be from your own personal account and the twenty five thousand sec are still being held hostage by the bank okay since all of these fields are quite loathsome and take forever to fill out if you actually want me to make a full video about how to fill out these forms and what you should consider when you're doing so, please let me know and I may record another video just for the business registration application. All right, so once you've done all of that, yay, congratulations, you have now submitted your application and the waiting begins. Well, actually, more like it resumes because, you know, we've been waiting this whole time. This is probably like a month period of waiting around for applications to be processed. Of course, we're not aiming for speed, especially if this is your first time actually setting up a business in Sweden. You want to make sure you're doing your due diligence. So check out all the resources that you may need in all the free platforms that we can find on Google, especially about resources when it comes to entrepreneurship and starting your own endeavor, your own venture here in Stockholm. I'm talking about Almi. I'm talking about Niforetag Centrum. I'm talking about the city of Stockholm. They have all these consultants, MBAs, you have advisors, everybody that can help you essentially figure out how to run a business or start it to begin with. And they will do all of this for free. These are free resources that thanks to our taxpayers' money, we are actually benefiting from. But in the meantime, you wanna be learning things, you wanna be starting maybe to think about your website, to think about how you're gonna promote your business, how you're gonna set it up, who you need help from. So all of these things you can be doing in the meantime while you wait, but eventually we get to step number nine. And this is when you actually get your business registration number. So your business registration number is this beautiful, precious number. That means your business is officially registered in Sweden. And eventually you get to a point where you can use that business number to also make deals with other businesses, with clients, and will all be under the same kind of legal entity of your active black. So your limited liability company is now official. And congratulations if you got to the spot because of course this has already been a very long marathon. I mean, I, I'm tired from this video. So if you think the same way, then probably you've gone through the whole process and you now understand much better what it means to start your own business yourself. Final step number 10. This means you actually get a little mailbox letter. And in your mailbox, you're going to find a little letter from Skate Verket, from Bolags Verket, saying you are now the proud business owner of whatever company company insert name here. So now that this is the case, you're ready to start making money. So start, don't hesitate, just go out there and seize the day because you are a grown up business owner. Oh yeah, yeah. And then you have to go, of course, to the bank because <laughs> the freaking bank does not do anything easy. 
So then you have to book an appointment. Now they're all digital appointments to actually get access to your 25,000 seg. The banks need your organization number that has been uh, the number that was provided in the letter about your registration of your business. And the bank will officially open an account where your 25,000 sec will be there for you to utilize. Of course, if it's one of the main banks that, like I said, the big banks, they will take their fee first. So it's actually only 22,500 sec or so, but eventually you can actually use that money. So there you go. They will set up all the accounts. You'll have all the apps in your phone and perfect. That's it. That's all. You made it. There you go. It wasn't so hard, was it? I mean, maybe a little. That's what I'm here for, isn't it? Like anyway. Now, I love to help people and I love to share my business knowledge with everybody. So we have many more cool entrepreneurs. So I would say if you want to learn more about all the resources that I've mentioned throughout this video, please check the description box. I've linked them there. Yes, you're welcome. <laughs> And uh, if you are wondering about any other questions, make sure you book an appointment with these advisors, business advisors, scaling advisors. All of these people can help you so much. And again, it's free for you to use. So if it's free, it's for you and it's for me and it's for everybody who wants to start their own business. So do it. Honestly, the beginning is always the hardest. So give yourself some kudos, some patting the back. You did it. You made it all the way to the end of this video and hopefully to the end of the registration process for your business here in Sweden. I wish you the best of luck and I see you out there rocking it hard. <laughs> Let me know if you found this helpful and if yes, I might do this kind of content more often. I mean, it was a lot of fun. I'm like sweating. Uh, that was a workout for me, you know, too many hour movements. But I would love to do more content like this. I really like talking about business, about being an entrepreneur, starting my journey, helping others, you know, lift them up and educate, you know, make business education more accessible. So please do let me know if you like this kind of video and I can make another one um, about other topics. Uh, so comment below if you found this helpful and hopefully then we might see each other around. All right, see you down the road. Hey, yo. <laughs> Right, buddies, you ready for my lecture? I'm gonna teach you how to be a business person, even though I'm still figuring it out myself. I'm like, will any of this footage be usable? <laughs> okay, that was fun. That was fun, that was fun. <laughs>